G'day guys, it's Al here. This is my uh, 2023 BMW G310 GS and some observations. It's uh, yeah, kind of a review maybe, but just basically the bike, what I enjoy about it, what I like about it and uh, how it works for me and why I've come back to a 310 single cylinder smaller bike instead of having such a massive large bike, I guess. I had the F800 GS, the 750, 650. It's been a bit of a roller coaster of bikes uh, over the years. Some of us just like to get them and set them up and use them and then life changes. And uh, I've come to the, the G310GS and it's just awesome. Yeah. All right, so day one, uh, Doncaster BMW, that have hooked me up. It's got the Calamari Gold and this is in original form, ready to rock and roll. I uh, firstly just put in a couple of little mounts. So I had a camera and a phone mount. Uh, just very simple stuff straight off the bat. And, uh, put it in the GPS to say hey let's go to King Lake and we'll see how we go so super cautious uh, a couple of kilometers of bike at the most from the service team getting it set up and from there in case of out on the freeway tires need scrubbing in uh, you know, super slippery beautiful day so very fortunate with uh, day one of getting out there on the bike and getting familiar with it. the uh, adjustable levers had all the way in so a bit of an upgrade over the, uh, the first generation levers, uh, levers and also has the slipper clutch which uh, is a bit of a benefit in my opinion great for learners amazing for learners and i also really like it so part way up to king lake there we got the uh, bit of dirt already so that was pretty awesome and uh, as clean as it was going to be as they say so flicking back a little bit earlier um, before i purchased the bike i wanted to see what it's like and bmw is one of the brands that does carry a few demo bikes so bright and bmw first gen um, gs and again slipper clutch uh, getting used to it, getting used to lights, the setup, uh, the levers, and just the feel for it, and also having to rev it out while also running it in. So that's a bit of a bit of a, a balancing act, I guess. But uh, just a heap of fun, heap of fun. Uh, quite a quiet note too in the exhaust. Now I was very fortunate. Kate and James hooked me up. They've got one of the first gens, and uh, James led me out some really awesome rides: highway, freeway, dirt, gravel. Got a really good experience with it. Um, no slipper, different lights, but it does have a switchable ABS, so rear wheel only, but you can turn it off on those first gens, and it was something I really didn't like. I really didn't, uh, didn't like the idea of that, uh, but uh, big fan of ABS, so I've got no issue needing to turn it off completely. Overall, getting to it a little bit later, and maybe some second videos, but Gibby pannier racks, Gibby engine bars, got the Achevis hand guards. Uh, eventually I got uh, bar risers put on it, acro pipe from BMW, which I've put some additional uh, baffles into, and uh, just to make it a little bit quieter. Uh, and here we go, yeah, ABS just does good things. Kangaroos here in Australia, all over the place, and uh, just a you know, bit of a benefit. I guess running knobby tyres, different conditions, just a win. Um, I've got them on the dirt bike, uh, with, and I can uh, quite enjoy it. All right, so yeah, simple open cockpit with a, without a, without a doubt. <laughs> um, I've added a couple of mounts, so camera, uh, telephone, and uh, in this case, I've got the Garmin GPS to give me a true reading. Uh, bike is running about three kilometres over the posted speed limit, so depending on the lower speeds and the higher you get, the, the sort of slightly longer uh, the gap is. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Probably should edit, edit that out, but I might just leave it. In. We'll see, how, we'll see how we go. Small screen, um, you do get a bit of wind buffering, but I kind of like it because you know you're riding. Uh, it's one of the benefits. You've got the six speed transmission or gearbox, uh, and you've got to work it up and down uh, to really get the most out of the bike. I've, in the earlier days when you're running it in, you don't have the luxury of that. The, uh, the, the sweet point, if you will, are on, on the band is uh, way up and higher in the rev, so it's a lot more fun. It doesn't have the levels of torque that. Um, a majority of the other bikes will do. Uh, on the dirt, just just a heap of fun. Now I'm rocking Midas EO7 tyres, and uh, they're a really good compromise in my experience. Um, just, yeah, bouncing around all over the place. Uh, whatever conditions you want, environment. Um, a little bit later on you'll see a bit of snow footage. Like any bike, the, the more set up for the off-road is with the knobbier tyres, the more you can really go quicker, I guess, and the pace. I tend to travel by myself most of the time so i am carrying my own emergency gear and uh sort of 
if I'm going to get myself into trouble, I want to get myself out of trouble. And in that sense, this bike is on point. Good suspension travel for the size of the bike, not too heavy. You can pick it up by yourself if you need to. Admittedly, there are techniques for other bikes, but if you're hitting really gnarly trails and you're really adventuring long days, every time you pick it up, it's more energy, it's more use. Get off the bike, get on the bike. Um, the higher the ground clearance, the higher the suspension, I guess some people will push that you can just get through easier and, and to a degree that's the case but you put a tank bag on there you've got your panniers on your top box in some cases I'll put the skis and things on the back of the bike there's not as much room to work with so for me the smaller bike just awesome I guess I'll say awesome probably a lot when it comes to the G310 GS fuel wise really good uh, the tanks not too huge doesn't need to be Around the three kilometer mark, sorry, three liters per 100 kilometers, depending on how you ride it. That being said, again, this is the trade off of being a smaller, lighter bike. Uh, once you get up around the 100 kilometers or 60 mile hour and above, it definitely chews the juice like crazy. We're limited to 110 kilometers an hour here, so maybe 65 mile an hour roughly. Uh, and that does, yeah, it, it, it'll maintain it. You can go up hills, the storms, the winds, and all that sort of, and that's a true 110 kilometers per hour on the GPS, not uh, using the, the speedometer. Uh, um, so I'm accurate and then from there you just uh, you are definitely seeing an increase obviously in the fuel usage because it just doesn't have that torque that the bigger bikes do. Um, here we are at the back of Wombat, river crossings just, you know, or creek crossings depending on your terminology, rocks. Because it's not so huge, it's not big, you can paddle with your feet if you need to, but if the bike gets off balance you can ride it up again. It's not, it's not terrible, it's, uh, yeah, it gives you a lot of options which is really just a win in my opinion. Night time, uh, being the second generation, it does, instead of having the ABS switch on the left hand side, it's got a three position light switch. So you've got daytime running lights, which is an LED bar, and then you've got low beam, high beam. Uh, I like the fact you can flick, well, in my opinion, you can flick between running lights and the daytime uh, LED bar if you need to sort of get someone's attention, but you don't want to be too crazy to sort of, you know go from there. Uh, permanent LED uh, indicators and then you just when you're indicating it flashes and changes direction. Uh, again I'm not usually at the front looking at it. I'm usually behind the cockpit obviously riding it so uh, going from there. Good visibility at night. Um, some people will fit up uh, uh, high, high running lights uh, and additional gear if you want to. There's, there's all sorts of options out there and, and people like to personalize their bikes of course. With uh, the off-road, the suspension, I've only just recently, like at about the 6,000 kilometer mark, probably modified the preload in the back, I've just used it. Uh, there are a lot of good upgrades for suspension out there, I haven't touched it. Uh, for me, one of the things I really appreciate is it's a five-year warranty uh, that came with the bike. So for me, purchase price was a touch over $8,000 Australian, and that uh, came with five-year warranty, you got your roadside assistance, and all good, just good stuff. Uh, I've then gone on to add a taller seat, the factory taller seat, uh, bar risers, heated grips, USB, um, as it were from, from BMW. They are a little bit dearer. Um, heated grips, bar risers, and USB, I recommend getting it all done together because it's all in the same sort of front area. You've got to pull a lot of stuff off to get in there. Uh, however, once it's all in, it's just you just get on and use it. And the, the heated grips two position, low and high, BMW, um, you know, similar to perhaps sitting in an Audi car or one of the fancy vehicles, you just know it all works. So regardless of where it's manufactured, the design techniques, it's all just on point. And it's just a pleasure to use and ride and enjoy. And now you're sitting on a GS. Um, it's got enough ground clearance, it's got the uh, factory bash plate on it. Get over the top, hit rocks, bounce off things. Uh, it is vibey um, in the sense of you can feel the bike, you know you're riding it. And uh, just a heap of fun in that sense. Uh, with the Ground clearance, don't off, it's only the deep ruts, and again, lighter bike, you can just walk around, wheel around, um, get through little areas, uh, some of the single track if you needed to, uh, will give you options. Again, the bigger bike, longer touring, highway, probably more pleasurable um, on the multi-day, well, multi-week, multi-month missions. Again, if you're really gnarly and really off-road, this thing's just on point. And for me, I'm in the city. Uh, I'm going into Melbourne, about three million people, urban environment, we've got trams, slippery roads, push bikes, Uber Eats, all the variations on that theme. And I like having something I can just get around the traffic quite nicely. Uh, it's not as small as a scooter, but it's pretty close, although some of those scooters are, are huge these days. Uh, 
mirrors work on point, they just rock. There's no real big issue there. Um, no vibration. The Cherbus guards are uh, quite nice. I just like the color point. I've had a little bit of red paint here and there. Also thrown on some uh, bit of red paint on the rear mount that I've had the top box too. Just to, just to personalize it like people do. And uh, gives me a few options, which I quite like. Uh, footage here up at Mount Macedon. Uh, nice little bit of just the fire trails, I guess. Back at Wombat, footage is just from all over the place, creek crossings. Uh, this one's uh, one of the fun tracks. I was out there playing with uh, James, who's upgraded himself to a, uh, he's gone from the Versys to the MT450, or the 450 MT from CF Moto. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun on both our bikes and, and, and sort of swapping and enjoying. And uh, for me, the, 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 I come back to the 310. The, the, a lot of benefits if I had just one bike. Um, yeah, it'd be an interesting one to figure out, but again, urban environment, 90% of my riding is in around cars, transport, trucks, all the rest of it. And so being able to just uh, legally, that's uh, lane split, as in go between the vehicles, do all that sort of stuff, uh, just a lot of good options there for me. So um, quite enjoy uh, the benefit of doing that sort of stuff. I found that doesn't slip out too much, there's no traction control or any of that sort of modern technology, well, I say modern technology, it's, it's got the ABS, that's sort of basically all it needs, I guess, uh, and being sort of entry level budget price, the USB you've got to add to it, the heated grips you've got to add to it, there's no cruise control or, or any sort of those bits and, bits and pieces, however, it does add to the riding experience. Um, when I've compared it to some or other other bikes, I've ridden larger ones or different styles. I, I sort of look at this and saying it's more like a it's more like a two stroke compared to a four stroke in the sense if you've got to really rev it out, have a lot of fun, and having the acro pipe on it does freed up a little bit. Uh, genuine option through BMW, so all legitimate there, and I've just quietened down and all of a sudden it curved into the tip, uh, so it doesn't burn the bottom of the um, the panniers just heaps of fun probably just say it over and over again you hop on you go uh, heaps of fuel not using too much fuel means it's pretty easy if you want to carry a bladder an extra bottle um, you usually see around 340 kilometers of projected range uh, and if you're just pootering along it's just a heap of fun and then the more fuel the more weight so trade-offs all around I have laid the, the bike down slowly uh, left and right hand sides uh, the Gibby engine bars work a treat. Again, we'll sort of look into that in another video, a bit closer, a bit of better footage. Uh, everything just covers in mud. You wash it down, you go again, reset, start over. Weather conditions, it doesn't really matter what I'm riding in. It just works. Um, been in some crazy storms like most people when you ride every day, uh, ride all conditions, all weather, all times of day, you sort of, you just get exposed to everything. So um, the tallest seat, which I've since put on, um, just really comfortable. It's quite interesting. I'm a touch under six feet and uh, it just adds a whole element to me, which, which I really like. Have played on other bikes uh, a fair bit, um, even since getting the 310, sat on uh, the back range of Beamers, a big shout out to Doncaster and Ringwood there. And, and you know, Brighton, I haven't had a chance to get back to and the city ones where I get some of the gear from, but trying different trophies, uh, the GS1300 trophy, they're a different bike, different style. It's um, yeah, I wouldn't say sports car to SUV, but that's, I suppose that's a way of looking at it. You've got to work a lot harder to get this bike. Well, actually, let's clarify that. In my opinion, you're doing a lot more riding in the sense of up and down the gears, and you've got to work it to get around uh, the twisties and the hills. However, on the really big bikes, as soon as you hit the dirt, then you've got to work a lot harder uh, from what I've experienced myself. And you've got, you're wider, you're taller, the bike's halfway over by the time you get your foot down, depending on how you're riding. And again, skill sets make a huge difference. But uh, probably enough, yeah, just enough of everything really, just a heap of fun, which is, Pretty brilliant in my opinion. Uh, I've got it set up for panniers so I can put uh, two sides. I've got the Gibby lockable panniers. Again, being an urban person, uh, I feel the lockability is just where I'm at as compared to soft panniers. There's lots of discussions and ideas. I ride solo primarily uh, or in oh, set myself up to ride solo. So I want to have the ability to leave the bike, go for a wander if I want to, come back to it. Um, and, and the lockable panniers work for me. Bike's been over a couple of times on them, just been okay. 
uh, also it adds a little bit of protection to the bike itself. Um, and when I say it's been over, for those listening in from BMW, uh, they're, they're slow rollers, it's <clears throat> like up in the snow side sand just slipped in, it was all sitting there perfectly and all of a sudden it decides, oh we're just going to slowly roll over uh, onto its side. Uh, one of those things that just happens, that's the joy of the, the GS world. Uh, even on the cockpit, there's a, on the right hand side uh, of the spe speedo, you've got the little GS label and it's sort of like, oh yeah, that's a GS, yay! Um, I don't know how to pronounce the uh, genuine GS terminology, but there it is. And uh, it is just all good fun. Speaking of the speedometer, um, you've got a, a whole bunch of things you can flick through. The buttons on the left hand side on the dashboard, it works. Um, there's no switches on the handle to, to rotate through the information like some other bikes. Uh, so you sort of preferable to be stationary from what I've experienced for me uh, and then flick through it if I want to. So tripometers, uh, odometer, range, I tend to just have it on range myself um, out of interest to see what it is. Uh, as well as the fuel gauge which is on point, it just sort of works. I tend to work between the two of those depending on the, ri the riding style um, and then I'll sort of really get a bit excited and let you know when it's to right down to the bottom. Let you know the gears, which, uh, yeah, a bit of a fan of that, especially when you're working it so much, you can sort of like going, oh, okay, what's happening? And riding with other people, uh, I found it sort of interesting once you've done the running process and you start to use the whole bike, just the lengths, like it does like playing up in the higher, uh, higher rev range. Uh, not thrashing it, but it's, yeah, it's a whole lot of fun. You use the whole bike. It's not sort of like you're hitting a rev limiter. I, I don't know if there is one, I haven't gone that high. Um, but for, for uh, just around town and uh, out in the mud, yeah, just absolutely on point. If you want to break traction with the back wheel, you can do it. Um, sort of, for, I guess, that spinning around technique. <laughs> Again, not a guru of that sort of stuff, so couldn't tell you how well it sort of works. Uh, and I'm guessing there's more experienced operators out there rocking around with these bikes. Prior to this, I had the F800R running the knobby tyres, and uh, it was just a bike, the, the COVID world that I ended up on, and uh, got the knobbies on there, and uh, yeah, crazy amounts of adventures. Um, in the twisties, that was probably similar, oh, the, similar amounts of fun. Once you get used to the bike, you can lean them over, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, this one's more forgiving, lighter, a little bit more travel suspension, so it's on point. Uh, the F800R was a road bike, I was taking off road, so it was always going to be. Uh, a compromise but I guess like everything we're doing is compromises uh, you hear people talk about the unicorn bike and what it is to them but there's so many versions of what a unicorn is um, a lot of people are looking at GS's or uh, adventure bikes the larger ones as well or the smaller ones to sort of do everything um, limitations on budget can be an issue what equipment's available how you like to set your bike up um, a huge fan of just sitting on the bike and going do I like it um, if you can get a test ride uh, you know, again with the Beamers it's great because they're out there, if you've got a mate who'll lend you one, like I was very fortunate to have, that was wonderful, um, but uh, say Honda CRF 300s, the Rallies and the Ls, they're rare as hen's teeth and getting access to one to take for a test ride can be quite tricky. Um, the larger bikes, the second hand, can be yeah, definitely worth travelling around a bit, talking to other people, seeing who's got what and, and what you can do on them. Um, the mounts I use are RAM mounts, so I've got them sort of a few of them over the years, different parts on the bike. I uh, can mount cameras, GPS, the telephone. Uh, I do carry a spare phone with me uh, just in case I get separated for the bike, but you know, that's a whole different world. I haven't really experimented with too much other than all the genuine stuff uh, as far as the bike, the mirrors. It all just works. BMW does a lot of research, a lot of years, a lot of experience. It's just fun and, and it does well. You get. Um, I suppose, yeah, it can get a bit tricky uh, in the mud playing, getting stuck, <laughs> like you can see here. This is, uh, again, I'm, um, you know, Kevlar jeans, got the former boots, and just, just playing, just having a heap of fun out there. Uh, Macedon, again, it's a lovely little playground. You can kind of, I guess, I know it's interesting, I sometimes find you go for a ride in the bush and then you, you pause and you want to just get back on the bike and uh, take a breather. Um, one of the old things I used to say was if you get bogged, just stop and make a coffee. Because the time it takes to have the coffee, you'll sort of reassess, 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 take it all in, see it all and really enjoy it. And I, find, I think it's the same with the bike, just getting out there, getting to a location. It will work harder for me. Again, in Australia, we've only got a few roads that are 110 or above 60 mile an hour. Otherwise, it's 60 mile an hour below, 100 kilometers an hour below. And for that 
speed range. Uh, the 310 just beautiful. You're not using too much fuel, it's not too big. It's windy, it's noisy, it's not a car, it's a motorbike. So you're having a lot more fun than you might in other bikes, but that's also my experience. Um, I like the smaller CC, more challenging. Um, budget. Uh, I was sitting out there on a BMW owner's ride recently next to a 1300 trophy and uh, I think that bike was $38,000 as it sat. Mine was $8,330 uh, depending on, you know, you had money for your leader, your accessories, panties and stuff. But you get the 310 theoretically and then have $30,000 spare to travel the world. <laughs> But each person, different experiences, different strokes, and I've been very fortunate myself in the past and had some larger bikes. Um, and yeah, really enjoy just being fully set up for, for whatever you want to do and uh, adding bits and pieces to the vehicle or the bike and you, and you just go. Um, when I've got the panniers on there, fully loaded up, whether it's the ski gear, uh, I've been doing that a little bit recently with the shorter skis, whether it's camping and, and, and other equipment, you will slow down. Um, it's a 310cc motorcycle. It doesn't have huge amounts of torque and power to really just rip along the roads. This is what you get, and uh, it's a heap of fun. The pipe, a little bit of extra noise, a little bit lighter weight. Do really like it. Uh, there's lots of trains of thought. You hit the horn, people look everywhere. You, you rev the exhaust a bit, you get a point of reference, they might look and see you. And it's a bit of a combination for safety out there. If you want to be super safe, well, it's all different experiences for different people. You can see here, you're just cruising through. I'm not even stressing about the environment. It is a trail I've been on before, uh, although I think this is the first time down there with the 310. And uh, just a lot of fun. Midas tyres do add a little bit extra um, benefit over the uh, the stock tyres that it comes with. They work really, really well and uh, absolutely great fun in the twisties uh, and on the blacktop. Uh, and there's no reason not to learn on these sort of bikes. Um, can be a bit tricky. Look, the only time the ABS has been an issue, I guess, up in the serious snow. Uh, and that's not going to happen a lot for a lot of people. However, for what I do is, and I'll probably try and do a little mini video or something, but yeah, just, I had the bike turned off. Uh, sorry, I had the engine off, the engine uh, switch off. Had the bike turned on power-wise, so the heated grips were on, kept the hands going, which was late, and if I needed to, I had also had the running lights and everything. But I just paddled along and, and into the downhill sections rolled along, which doesn't allow the ABS to kick in because the engine's not running. So you've just got regular brakes, you can have it in gear, uh, by having the engine light or the engine kill switch off uh, or in, in, engaged, uh, your bike's not going to bump start when you let the clutch out. So you've got your brakes working without ABS uh, and you've got the engine as well to sort of like restrict you with the clutch as well for going downhill. But yeah, wet nights, here you go. Bit of lighting, dashboard lights up when you need to, similar to uh, going in the tunnels where the lights are on, where it'll just illuminate when you go into like underground areas or big bridges, uh, shadowy areas. Everything just works. It's just simple, it's straightforward, it's nice. Um, as I said, I've added that UV, uh, AV, uh, sorry, the USB to it, the genuine one, and it uh, works a treat. And here, this is up at uh, the back of Sound, um, Mount Erica, I think it was. And yeah, it was snowing, heaps of mud, stupid amounts of fun, uh, and it all just worked. Um, yeah, going uphill, uh, once you get into the stuff, it did uh, fail a little bit, but again, it's a motorbike in the snow. It's um, things are going to get special, and it's a dual sport, lightweight touring bike. Um, you can see here, full pannier set up, and I'm just cruising along, no no stress uh, again. Without the, uh, I don't think the engine was running at this stage, uh, but it was quite a section uh, to to get out of. And the snow's falling earlier, and as you can see from the pannier, just covered. Uh, highway use. I thought I'd speed this up uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. But uh, essentially, yeah, it'll sit on 110. Um, the posted speed limit compared to what the GPS, uh, the bike dashboard showing is a little bit out, but I do work with a, uh, the little Garmin there, uh, given that sort of true overground uh, GPS speed. So I know I know what I am doing. Um, yeah, well lit, simple, open, enough power to do what you want to do. If you load it up more, uh, if you don't want to use as much fuel, you can stay on the freeway and just stay left. I guess in Europe and places, you've got that 80k freight limit or, or uh, truck limit, so it can be quite good because you just you know you just cruise along behind them. If you're having an issue, you want to be chilled. Uh, if you need to overtake, you've got it. Uh, they are quite strict in Victoria, where I'm based. Um, 
with with your speed, so you're just getting a whole lot of trouble. So this bike is, you got to, I mean, you know, you can get yourself in trouble if you want to, but uh, yeah, it does well. Just heaps of fun and uh, really, really enjoy it. So huge thumbs up and. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, just shout out. A few videos coming along. And uh, for me, it's just a great commuter bike. I've put about 7,000 Ks on it. Had it about, uh, just coming up to 12 months, a little over 12 months now. And it's just a pleasure to ride. It's my touring bike, my adventure bike, commuting bike. And uh, the only thing I don't do with it is take it to the motocross track. But uh, some people have done things like that as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking it all. Uh, stick along this long if you have and uh yeah game on get on the track and uh enjoy the ride cheers guys ciao